we're going to talk about hungry. And mm. hungry always delivers when it comes to emotions, not always good ones, right, but that's always true. something is happening with hungry with Viktor Orban. And now we have a new oppositionist um, that is stirring some trouble in Hungary. Um, and with us, we have a guest to talk about that, Andrei Sadetsky from Center for Eastern Studies. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Hello, thank you for having me. Right, so we spoke about, uh, I mean, Orban is usually the troublemaker. Uh, we have a new troublemaker. We'll see which, who is good or bad. But let's run this. Uh, we have an exclusive little clip here from our very own Ovidio Shnitsev, who was actually able to speak with Mr. Majar. So let's run that before we begin our conversation. So what are your political plans? Um, do you really want to challenge Viktor Orban? And can, do you think that it's possible here in Hungary? Yeah, you know, it's a strange situation. Uh, two months ago, nobody knew me in Hungary or anywhere, anywhere else. And now we had the biggest uh, rally since 2010 in Hungary. Actually, it was not tens of thousands, but hundreds of thousands of people, at least 200,000, according to police sources. You know, the people in Hungary are fed up, fed up with the lies, with the hypocrisy of the corrupt government. And now maybe the time is here and, and the change and the spring is unstoppable. You are asking me about my plans, but you know now we are living day by day and, and we see the changes and the hopes of the people. And of course the EP election is coming, so this will be the first very important step for us and for the people maybe to take back our homeland. Mm -hmm. Many people challenge your credibility. Uh, you are a former Fidesz insider. You were a beneficiary of, of this whole system of, of, of Viktor Orban. Um, I, I heard even people saying that, um, that, that maybe it's some sort of like Russia-style regulated opposition. Um, what do you say to, to that sort of criticism? It's very funny. Yes, uh, to be honest, uh, I was an insider. I was the member of the party. I am. I was uh, since 2002, when we had a completely different Viktor Orban, and of course I was. I am an ex-husband of an ex-minister of Mr. Orban, and I also was CEO of a state-owned uh, company, the so-called Student Loan Facility Center, from which I have resigned at least two years ago, but I never was an elected or appointed uh, politician uh, or civil servant of the government. Mm -hmm. To be more precise, I was a civil servant. I was a diplomat in Brussels for many years for the Orban government. Uh, uh, it's also funny that I was responsible for the relationship between the European Parliament and the Hungarian government. And you can imagine how fruitful was this relationship. All right, so Mr. Uh, Majar, he knows the fit Fidesz party. He knows Viktor Orban. He also said that he wants to create a new political party. And as he said, he will run. He said he will run in the European Parliament elections on June 9th. Now, what what is your take on that? Do you give him any chances, or this is just a sudden, very quick and short excitement in in Hungary? I think the frustration in Hungary is there definitely. And uh, if we go back to the events of February, when you had a, a large scandal involving the president and her pardoning uh, a person involved in covering the pedophilia scandals, and um, you, you can see that uh, Peter Majar really uh, managed to kind of channeled this frustration that is there in the society. It also speaks to the uh, state of the Hungarian opposition that was not able to somehow benefit of this uh, wave of, uh, you know, frustration and, and anger also at the government. So, so he was able to somehow create uh, a new movement and uh, it's interesting because he's a very unexpected leader. I mean, being, as we heard a moment ago, an insider uh, in Fidesz, who very recently was in the party. He was, uh, he was husband of one of the main uh, leaders of the party. 
It's quite unexpected, but somehow people followed him. It's, of course, early to say how much, uh, well, to what extent it is sustainable, but so far, looking at the numbers of people on the streets last sa Saturday, it's quite impressive. I mean, actually, I'm surprised that he's mixing in his personal life, his wife. I don't know if he wants, if he thinks it will help him or, or we'll, we'll see yeah. what happens. But uh, on that, I'm, I'm going to be more skeptical here because, I mean, we know he said here he's the, the ex-husband uh, to uh, the Justice Minister, Ms. Varga, who was forced to step down. We know the circumstances. All crux of the matter goes back to, of course, uh, President Novak also then stepping down. Uh, now, Ms. Varga was supposed to be the main person for Fidesz on the list for the MEP position going forward in, in June. Uh, now, that's changed. Now, we're kind of looking at this. This is just another Fidesz-colored person. It's just Fidesz in a different name. Is this a sincere opposition figure, or is this maybe just another evolution of Fidesz in a different way? How sincere is this? Because we've had several of kind of oppositions move forward in Hungary, but nothing has ever really truly changed. So is this a true genuine movement, or is this maybe even perhaps something that Orban is behind? Uh -huh. Yes, well, I think it's too early to say really like uh, who who uh, he really is, right? And and uh, whether it is genuine. I mean, the protest is genuine. The fact that people are uh, going to streets to protest in large number, this is definitely genuine. But there are a lot of doubts if you read Hungarian press, Hungarian commentators. They are asking this question whether it will really harm uh, Fidesz government or it will harm more uh, the existing opposition, which is, as I said, in a dire state. They lost uh, four uh, consecutive elections. They, they are not able to really uh, kind of challenge the, the, the Orban power. So in this sense, the, there was a demand for even some people say, you know, uh, Hungarian society was waiting for a messiah, right? To 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 have someone who can grasp the the, the problems, can lead the people, can. But to uh, your point, actually, let me interrupt you for a second because oh. uh, protests like this were not really taking place in Hungary before. I mean, that numerous. So did it just take this one man? unknown for political uh, for public to public opinion and he just what he just came out and said guys you know we have to change this country where is he coming from who is backing him up well that we don't know for sure uh, he is a former Fidesz guy although not really from you, you know he was not well known he was more right. at the back seat he he was a diplomat working in some state companies. He was basically, if he was known, he was known as a husband of a prominent uh, politician. He definitely, well, can be attractive for not only opposition uh, voters, but also from people, uh, for people that were voting for Fidesz for a long time, but got disappointed due to corruption scandals, due to, you know, a total domination, basically, of every part of the state, every, you know, uh, part of the economy even. So, mm -hmm. so he can be, in this sense, credible to the disappointed voters. Maybe that's his strength, that not only he mobilizes uh, usual suspects that would protest, of course, against Orban, but also he can uh, be attractive to those vo vo voters that previously voted for Fidesz. Right, so it's going to be an interesting one to follow there. Well, I've concluded there. That was Andrzej Sadecki. Thank you so much for that. But remember that Orban, he's cemented that power so long, also very much funneling cash through different think tanks in Brussels. It's going to be hard to believe that he's just going to let go of it. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see where, um, where, who people follow.